But now I am in FEMA Region 6, formerly Texas. We are under global government. The TPP has passed the House, set to pass the Senate. Liberals, conservatives across the board, um, from the unions to the Tea Party that have gotten the subsections through WikiLeaks, say it's the end of sovereignty as we know it. It makes the president a dictator. It gives him unlimited power over trade, borders, taxes, guns, uh, you name it. And it says in there they'll do this. So while we were all focused on the tragic shooting in South Carolina in Charleston, this was rammed through yesterday. And while we were busy doing that, they were putting in internet kill switches. And the FCC was declaring power over the web and saying they're planning to tax it and regulate it and control free speech. There is a move towards totalitarianism everywhere. The Prime Minister of England came out a month ago and said, we're not going to put up with people's free speech anymore in a, in a chilling statement. Corruption and tyranny is accelerating because the globalists are taking over and they've committed so many crimes, it's all or nothing. They're going for broke. I've known Jesse Ventura for about eight, nine years, and I've uh, been part of three seasons or two seasons of his hit TV show. I've got to know him pretty well, traveled around the country with him, friends with his son as well. And he's the real deal. He's a real guy uh, who doesn't compromise and who, even though I disagree with him probably on 10, 15% of his political views, I admire him because he sticks to his guns and he'll be the same today as he was a year ago as he'll be in five years. He, he doesn't waffle. And that's why he's demonized. It's why they ran the hit piece with the late Chris Kyle, rest in peace, uh, who's, the family's now made, and then, well, the overall book and film have made hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and the book was a fiction when it came to the Jesse Ventura part, and a jury found that it was defamation, found that it was a fraud. That's very hard to do, especially when you're a public figure, but it, it was done with the intent of making money off defaming Ventura. It, 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 it rose above that level. There's now been a demonization campaign of Ventura, obviously because they don't want him running in 2016. They know a third-party candidate could really galvanize the people. They're scared of that. And so they're assassinating him, just like they're assassinating Rand Paul and Ron Paul and others right now with demonization campaigns. But he called me yesterday, and we're honored he's breaking this news here. He's got one of the top lawyers in the country. And, you know, who's beat Vince McMahon, you name it. And he broke down some info that is so over the top and affects every American. Unprecedented. I'm going to let him tell you what's happened. But 50 top media outlets have all lined up with their money and their power to crush Jesse Ventura and everybody else's free speech and everybody else's right to a trial and defend themselves. They want, simply put, the right from the courts to lie and destroy people. And, and, and remember MSNBC, and my lawyer said I could win last year, but he said it would cost millions. Millions I don't have. He said, you can win. MSNBC said the bombers were influenced by Alex Jones and that Alex Jones is deeply racist and showed no proof. A jury would uh, probably award me that. But but I, I just want my name. But, but see, I can't fight on every front. That's why I admired the fact that Ventura has spent incredible amounts of money, even though he was a well-to-do person, he spent a lot of it, is gone now, to get his name back. I mean, I can't give you the numbers. If he wants to do those, he can, but I happen to know that he didn't make any money on this. But he did the right thing, and now they're scared, they're lined up, and this affects everybody. Former Minnesota governor, uh, TV star, movie star, best-selling author, uh, former mayor, Jesse Ventura, joins us back in the United States in Minnesota, uh, he also hosts Off the Grid TV on Aura Television, very popular. Uh, Governor, I tell you, when you broke this down to me yesterday, it was staggering. You've learned more today. This this is a big deal. Uh, tell us exactly what's happened. Well, what, what's happened is this, Alex. Um, I won the trial. It was in front of a jury. The jury found for me for defamation. Then they all, there was a second count for unjust enrichment because of that defamation, that they used the defamation to enrich themselves and, and make millions of dollars. And the jury awarded me uh, roughly 25% in unjust enrichment. Well, this, uh, and we'll clarify right now, 50 is a little high. I'll read it. I've got it right in front of me. 
This is a motion for leave to file brief, whatever it is, A-M-I-C-I-C-U-R-I-A-E. Now, that's, that's legal jargon. Of 33 media companies and organizations in support of the 8th Circuit Court of Appeals, 8th Circuit District, urging a reversal of this decision. Now, in layman's terms, what this means, they want the ability to be able to write lies about anybody. Now, it just happens I'm a pretty big public figure, so they, they can, but, and so many people out there are going to think, well, this will never affect me. I'm not a public figure like Jesse Ventura. No media is ever going to lie about me. Well, that may be true, but it's still, this is a mega thing to our freedom and to protecting ourselves from the corporate fascist takeover that we're seeing. And what they want, if this is overturned, they will then have the ability to lie about you and make profit from those lies, and you will have no way to redress or no way to be compensated for the damage they do to you. So it's going to give them free reign. It's going to set the bar so high. The bar is already high. But it's going to set the bar so high that that they will be able to lie and get away with it, and there'll be nothing any individual out there can do. I fought this fight now by myself. It's three and a half years now, Alex, and it's drained me financially. And uh, my attorney said this could end up in the Supreme Court because we do have the Supreme Court decision back in 1960 backing us. So if the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals rules for them, they will actually be going against a Supreme Court decision already on the books. So this could go all the way to the high court. Uh, I'm urging people, I mean, I, I've never did this before really, Alex. I guess I did when I ran for governor and mayor asking for votes. And this is hard for me to do being a person like I am, but I, I've got to ask for help on this. I need help to fight this fight because it, 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 the 33, I mean, it's it's a who's who, Alex. Let me go down the list, can I, could I? Absolutely. Last night we talked and you hadn't even seen the document yet. Just your yeah. lawyer said it was scores. And I said, list of who it is. they it's want, a, before we do that, Governor, let me just explain to folks to be clear here. The major media from the New York Times to Fox News who are signed on to this, you're going to go over the list. They are saying they want immunity to be able to lie, just like vaccine makers want immunity. This is a license to steal, basically, people's identities. It's a license to say, I'm a bomber or Alex Jones is a child molester, or Joe Smith's a bank robber, when we're not. And, 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 it's, and it's, it makes it available that they can make profit from making those statements, that they will incur a great profit, and what they're trying to do is stop you from being able to stop them from making a profit from the lies. It's unprecedented. It is. Oh, yes, it is. This is unprecedented. This is big, so, so, so please break down what your top lawyer told you, uh, the angles of this, and who's signing on to... Well, I, I got the list right here. You got A&E Television Networks. We all know them from cable, A&E. Advanced Publication, Inc., American Society of News Editors, Association of Alternative News Media, the Association of American Publishers, Inc., the Authors Guild, Inc., BuzzFeed, Inc., uh, the Center for Investigative Reporting, Inc., Cox Media Group, Inc., E.W. Scripps Company, First Amendment Coalition, Forbes Media, LLC, Gannett Company Incorporated, Docker Media, Hatchet Book Group, Inc., uh, the Hearst Corporation, Landmark Media Enterprises, the Media Law Resource Center, the Minnesota Newspaper Association, uh, so even my own state of Minnesota stabs their governor in the back on this one. It shouldn't surprise me. They did it while I was governor, too. Total uh, traitors. Minnesota Newspaper Association, Motion Picture Association of America, MPA, the, so the Association of Magazine Media, the National Association of Broadcasters, the National Press Photographers Association, National Public Radio, Inc., New York Media, LLC, the New York Times, Newspaper Association of America, North Jersey Media Group, Inc., Penguin Random House, LLC, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, and Time Incorporated.
N Tribune Publishing Company, LLC, and the WP Company, LLC, which is the Washington Post. They are so scared of you because you took on Goliath, uh, you beat them, and now they're all piling in because they all tell so many lies now. Their executives have told them, go ahead and lie. They wouldn't lie as much as four or five years ago. I mean, they say outrageous lies about you and I and others constantly, and I, I guess they're scared we're going to start suing them, so they want the court to say they're allowed to enrich themselves off lying about people. That is incredible. Yeah, that's what they're asking the court to do uh, because they're, they're, they're putting it in light that this is an alternative for punitive damages. And, of course, you can't get punitive damage against an estate. I wonder if they'll uh, – I'm surprised Brian Williams isn't a signatory to this. <laughs> anyway, though, getting back to it, Alex, I never dreamed that this would, would explode to the level that it has. That, that the entire – this is a who's who – of the entire mainstream media of the United States of America. I know it is. Former Governor Jesse Ventura, who stood up, fought the hard fight, was told it's really going to be hard to win, still did it because he was lied about. He was defamed. Uh, they said he was there happy that vets were dead when he'd been at their commencement, uh, and he just stood up against it, and he won, and he used the American system to do it. They're trying to overthrow our system right now. I'm going to tweet at Real Alex Jones here in a moment while Governor Ventura is speaking. Basically, that the New York Times is asking a federal court to certify that they're allowed to lie. The New York Times and others are going to court asking the government to protect them and let them lie. That's where this country's going. They want to be able to do this. Already, defamation libel, if, if you're a public figure especially, is just stratospherically hard to prove. This is a short six-minute segment. Governor Ventura, I've never heard him really open it up you know, during the breaks. I'm talking to him about this because he's brainstorming right now. He just had the idea for a defense fund today because he has expended most of his money, even though he was done well. Three and a half years fighting these guys. He told me off air all they wanted in discovery it, they're trying to break him right now. And if they do this, they're going to turn the heat up lying even more. This affects everybody. Just like TPP, just like the gun grab. We hang together or we hang separate. Governor, you were brainstorming a moment ago. Please share with the audience what you were sharing with me. I mean, I know it's hard for you to, you know, I mean, you're not a proud man, but you're also, I mean, you're a humble man, but you're, you're a private man. Uh, but, but go ahead, share with people what you've been through. Well, you know, when I went through the trial with Vince McMahon and the WWF or WWE as they are now, the appeal, when, when, when I won, the appeal happened and was finished in like three to four months. And so I inquired to my attorney, why has it been a year? You know, I got the verdict last July, August. Why has it taken a whole year and the Court of Appeals hasn't even seen it yet? Well, apparently they filed three extensions, the other side drew that out, and in the summer I learned the Court of Appeals doesn't work. They're off. So the soonest they pushed it off all the way till this fall. Well, that's a way, what they're doing, they're drawing it out, and the whole process, they've done this from day one, has been to draw it out as lengthy as they can to drain me of money. And, it, and, and they're succeeding to some extent because it has been a huge financial drain on me and my family. I mean, I, they, what this has caused me, the whole Kyle thing, I lost my television show, and for two years I could not get a job. When I finally got a job, it's a job with a foreign employer, and my, my income has dropped substantially, and so it's been basically almost three to three and a half years of unemployment and having to pay these legal bills to get these... That was their plan to destroy you. And People always say, we want champions, we want men that'll stand up against the enemy. We want people to take action. You're doing it. You haven't set up a P.O. box or a defense fund yet, but I wouldn't wait. Uh, give us an address. I'm well, going to write I'll, a check I'll, because, you know, you told me privately that, you know, over the years and not having a job... Uh, that you're running out of money, that'll make them really happy. I'm not going to let them win. You took action. You've beaten them. That was one shot out of a 1,000, but you had justice on your side. 
We've got to stand with you, Governor Ventura. This is important. I don't want you to give up. And I know you, you're not going to give up. Uh, and, and they are so upset right now. They wouldn't even say on Fox News when you won. They did new pieces re basically repeating what Kyle had said against you. I mean, truly sickening. Well, even worse than that, Bill O'Reilly brought on pundits and tried to call them legal uh, experts where all they did was ridicule the judge's decision, the jury's decision, and they said how wrong this was, and not one of them had sat in the courtroom and saw one speck of evidence. They, they, weren't, they were pundits. They weren't experts. But it's and, asinine and to Harper say you mind. would go to Harper, a Navy Harper SEAL Collins event. Harper is owned by the same corporation as Fox News. It's just crazy that, that, that they told Kyle, uh, you know, I guess that he could get away with this, and obviously he didn't get away with it. I don't know. I don't know that aspect of it that much, but, you know, and unfortunately he's dead and gone. I wish he were alive because I would have loved to have gotten him on the stand during the trial, but we didn't have that available. Just Wasn't that convenient? What's that? Wasn't it convenient he died? Very sad. Well, I don't know nothing about that. I'm, that happened down in Texas. You'd know more about that than I would, Alex. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I mean, he was a big propaganda front for them like Pat Tillman, and when he started going sideways, they had to make him a dead hero it was the only way to save their myth. But uh, any any of that, but the thing getting back on track here is that it, people don't realize they what they're at, what they're doing here, these cor these conglomerate corporations, the the enemy, for lack of a better term, that you and I are fighting against, they want the government to rubber stamp that they can lie. And that, uh, and 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 if they profit from those lies, they don't have to give up any money or profit because of those lies. It shows that they've become completely morally bankrupt at the top and are consciously trying to forge a criminal society. I want to get more into this when we come back. The overall move to attack free speech worldwide. Uh, I want to get into the shootings uh, with you. Uh, and, and different things that are unfolding with Jesse Ventura. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. Bottom line, the god of the New World Order is lies and fraud and deceit and dominating others. And they want all of it certified and protected so you have no way to ever bring them to justice. During the break, Jesse Ventura was talking about the fact that, hey, I'm taking on 33 Goliaths that have signed on with their hundreds of subsidiaries to an amicus brief to the court, and that means money, support, everything, to try to crush the jury decision. I wouldn't even call it an uphill fight. It's a battle. And he's gone this far. Uh, he hasn't even set up a kickstart campaign or a P.O. box yet. Sometime next week, that'll be ready. Jesse Ventura is our guest. But this just fits the overall climate that we're in right now where just every basic freedom is being scrapped. Jesse, I want you to put a bookend on this and make any other comments uh, on this subject and where this is going. And then I want to move uh, into some other subjects and get your take on that because I know listeners want to know your view on the tragic shooting up in uh, South Carolina, on what's happening in the economy, a lot of really ominous signs. Things are coming to a head, and classically, uh, people on the system, the enemy are going to the tools of totalitarianism, they think, to protect themselves, but I don't really think that's going to work too well. Uh, but, man, I tell you, the stuff we covered on your TV show, that first season on the FEMA camps and threat fusion centers, that really almost seems passe now. It was shocking at the time, but so much of this is out in the open, and I'm just stunned that they are moving this quickly. I mean, war with Russia, U.S. troops are now engaging in combat, not just training, against Russians in eastern Ukraine. Um, our government openly funded al-Qaeda. It's come out in the news. The 28 pages has come out that Saudi Arabia was running 9-11. Our government stood down. We're vindicated there. Uh, I don't want to be vindicated. I just want it all to stop. I mean, I can't believe they're more criminal than we even thought, is my view. I'm kind of ranting here. It's just... I've never been poleaxed. I'm getting to the point where I'm just, my mouth is hanging open, Governor. Well, it, it, you know, we did conspiracy theory and, 
everybody thought, oh, look at this crazy show, you know, a former governor's doing this, this is, and you know, they have the stereotypical, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist, which means you're nuts, when the reality is they did a study in Europe and found that conspiracy theorists are generally more intelligent than the average people. That's right. And, uh, and uh, uh, so, but we're, we're being vindicated, but you know, Alex, it's a hollow vindication because I... I don't want to be vindicated on it. I wish it were the opposite. I wish I was wrong. I wish that all the things on conspiracy theory were just that. They weren't, they weren't real. And now it's just astounding watching all this stuff, the FEMA camps, the, all, all this stuff that we talked about, is the, the strange weather when we went up and, and, and investigated HARP. And all this stuff, and and it's just like, oh my God, you know, no wonder they wanted that show off the air. <laughs> it's a bunch of mad scientists with unlimited funding playing God, and they just see our basic freedoms as in the way of them playing God. Pretty much, I'm starting to believe that myself. It's uh, uh, like I said, it's uh, you know, it's just amazing to me that my case, which is really, it's not a national case. An individual defamed me in a book, and I was forced to defend myself in, from that defamation, and, and they unjustly enriched themselves. How can this be a national issue? I was the guy that called you in Mexico and got you on the phone and told you, and you thought I was doing a dirty joke. I mean, you, you were like, come on, Alex. And I said, no, this is really being said all yeah, over the news I, right now. Yeah, and, but I mean, how can this be a national issue, which it is now? I mean, sure, it was important to Jesse Ventura, just as if someone defamed Burt Reynolds or defamed whoever else may be out there. You know, it's important to the individual and who they are. But now it's this whole, my whole trial has burst into an entire national war to save our asses. That's it. Well, that's what happens when one man does the right thing and, and then wins. The enemy comes in again and, well, and they just keep doubling down because they know they're going to lose if they don't and they just hope in this game of chicken you and others back off. But they're scared to death. They know their house of cards is coming down and they know that people are waking up to them. I hope so. I, I really hope so, Alex, because, you know, like I said, it gets pretty lonely out there fighting the fight. <laughs> and, and you know, it's been tough on my wife and tough on everybody. And, you know, uh, I've lost friends. that I Well, I guess they weren't really friends if they won't stick with you. So, But you thought they were. Well, there's a lot of cowards and a lot of people that are fair weather friends. They're summertime soldiers. And they're the plague. But when things really get bad, people you didn't think were your friends will also start showing up. Oh, yeah. yeah. No doubt about it. And like I said, I, I, I hate to do this, and we'll go on to the other subjects, but I may have to have help. And, and I want your – you got loyal listeners, Alex. Everywhere I go in the world, people come up to me, and one of the first things they'll always say to me is, I listen to Alex Jones. It's like a – it's almost like handing me a business card. <laughs> sure, it's Fight Club. It's Fight Club-esque. Expanding on that, I followed your case. I've been in the middle of it. I've, you know, I debated Chris Collin, Opie, and Anthony uh, right after this lie was put out. I, I warned them all, you know, you better watch it. This is serious. He's going to sue you. He didn't do it. You know, uh, you, you know, you're hurting somebody. But clearly it was a plan to destroy you. You didn't have a choice. They were coming to assassinate your name. That's what they do instead of killing you nowadays. They, right. they, they destroy your name. Yep, and, and your credibility, and they marginalize you. And so you didn't have a choice, and now you told me privately, hey, I'm not wealthy like I used to be. I've blown almost all my money on this, but I can't stop. And, you know, you were even privately telling me about having to, you know, sell your house or whatever to fight these people and just move to Mexico, I guess. I mean, it's just so sad that, that but look where it got Kyle. And I know you don't want to talk about him. It's not going to talk ill of the dead. I think, I, I think Chris Call's probably a nice guy. I think he got set up by some bigger people. He got played. Uh, and just like Jessica Lynch or Pat Tillman, uh, you know, it, it's... No, I, I don't think so, Alex, because he originally told the story back in 06. So he's been and telling he it a long it to, time. And he told it to his sailor buddies out there. So don't give him a pass. No, I understand. So, he, so it was a fish story. He, 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 he hoard the trident, what we call whoring the trident. We, we had a standard rule in the team's... Uh, much like Vegas, what happens on deployment stays on deployment. 
You don't come home and write books about it. Unfortunately, that's not the way it is today. Now they all come home and write books about it because they can get wealthy. Well, that's fine. I don't begrudge anyone anything, but it still goes against the old SEAL tradition of we don't talk about what we do. Well, the Army still won't brag, and they do a lot more because they have larger numbers than the SEALs. The, the Army is freaked out by the Navy SEALs agreeing to be these propaganda fronts. It turns out Zero Dark Thirty is not true. The Bin Laden raid's fake. What happened to the Navy SEALs? I don't know. Gosh, I don't know. Like I said, I've been out of them now for, you know, I left in 1973, but back then you didn't whore the trident. And remember, Chris Kyle, and then he took an old timer like me and threw me under the bus, knowing full well that that incident did not occur. And, and, and he did it for fame and fortune, so don't give him a pass. Well, I, no, I agree with you. It's very dishonorable. I, I, I was just... Clearly, though, he was being, people picked up on his line of bull, and they got him hyped up to go all the way with it. Oh, yeah. Well, and especially after he unfortunately died, they thought I would, well, here's the situation they put me in, Alex. Imagine for a moment if a veteran accused you of being a child molester, and you sued that veteran. And then, unfortunately, before it went to trial, the veteran died. Well, would you drop your lawsuit and be marked as a child molester for no. the rest of your life? No. Or would you continue the lawsuit to clear your name, which is all that I did? Well, I'll be well, honest. I First, I'd kick their ass. I mean, jury. yeah. No, I told you, you did what you had to do. You had no other recourse. Yeah, there was nothing else I could do other, or get out of public and go to Mexico and live and never show my face again. No, you didn't stick your tail between your legs. I admire you. You know, that was my alternative. And so I fought the fight. And the only thing is the fight has now gone globally or uh, not globally, but the United States. Oh, make no mistake. This is global because they follow U.S. jurisprudence. Uh, you know, I, I would have said I can't imagine the Supreme Court's going to overrule themselves and say you're allowed to lie knowingly and profit from it. But in this climate, they'll probably rule that way. I don't know. I don't know, and, and we'll have to wait and see. But like I said, Alex, if I'll be back. I'll call you back next week. Hopefully I'll set up to where if people do want to help out in this financially, and I, I mean, I feel like I'm asking for charity, but I think that the fight is a good fight. It's one that we, the people, need to fight. We've got to fight this because if I get beat, it's going to have repercussions not just on me. It's going to have them on you and everybody else. Well, I always said this was a national case. And you're like, no, it's just my personal case. And I'm not saying, see, I was right. This is key. They, with their actuaries, their computers, and their political scientists, knew three years ago, four years ago, that you were super popular, you were set, you could have been another Ross Perot or bigger, but they know you wouldn't back off. So they assassinated you, buddy. Instead well, of putting bullets in you, though, like Kennedy, they they said that you're glad veterans died and that you and, and, and that you got beat up. That's the way to discredit somebody, to try to get the SEALs to turn against you, to then come out and demonize you. And I guess they just thought you'd roll over. Well, they don't know us that well because we don't roll over. Anyway, Alex, what else you want to talk about? Well, I just want to say this. Uh, these are epic times we're living in. Obama came out and blamed the Second Amendment for the situation in South Carolina, but it turns out he was on a antipsychotic medication that literally says it can make you kill people uh, on the insert. Uh, and you know what I find interesting, Alex? Hmm? How come whenever it's a white guy doing the killing, he's always psychotic and on drugs or, or is mentally disturbed, and yet when it's black people, you never hear them say that, do you? Well, I'm not defending uh, when blacks or whites kill each other. I oh, think it's I horrible. Agree, but I just find it interesting. Uh, obviously, the guy's a psychotic nut. Nobody in their right mind goes out and behaves in that manner. That's a given. That's a given. Anybody that could walk in to a place of worship where there are peaceful, peace-loving people and walk in and, and just murder them, well, you don't have to, in that case... You don't have to question. Of course, that person is nuts. That's not normal behavior. No one in their right mind would ever say it was. Well, I agree. Most of the black-on-black -black crime is gang-related drug war stuff. Um, if, if it, in the few cases we've seen a deranged black person go in and do similar stuff, they've always been on psychotropics. I mean, uh, the insert says that these whole classes can make you do this. I don't know about that stuff, but... 
we need to take the big, you, you can't blame the gun. You know, right away, blame the gun and we need new gun laws. No, that ain't it. I mean, I have a gun safe and never once have I come home and heard any misbehaving out of it. That's right. You know, it requires a human element. And if there's not a gun, well, what would be the difference if the guy would have thrown a hand grenade? Well, what if he'd have waited outside with his car till the main church on Sunday let out and run over 100 people? Yeah, and ran them all over at 80 miles an hour. You know, the, the point is that we systematically like to blame the tool rather than go get to the base of the problem. Well, I agree with you, but this is about coming after the guns. And this, what do you think of the Republican leadership? Talk about how they're a gang siding with Obama against the Democrats and the Tea Party and ramming through the TPP. It's not completely rammed through, but they did pass it out of the House yesterday when it's a secret treaty and gives the president dictatorial power. Not only that, this is the trade thing? Yes, sir. Yeah, not only that, no input from the people and the participation of over 600 corporations in it. What you have here is fascism. You have now, because the Supreme Court allowed the corporations to become people, you have corporations dictating policy with their money to the, to the politicians, and now they're dictating policy completely. They're even brought in. They're brought in, and one of the things, you know what one of the things in this is? That the corporations can do business, and it allows them to sue governments who don't cooperate with them. Exactly. I mean, give me a break. Here they want to take away my right to sue when they lie about me and profit from it. But here on this trade agreement, they then want the ability to sue governments who don't kowtow to their needs. It's a total power grab, and, and th this is the same it's case. Fascism. It is. It, it's corporate fascism. Look at how 33 conglomerates with thousands of subsidiaries under them, thousands, are coming against you with money and power with that message with the same thing. They're removing the Magna Carta. They're removing the Bill of Rights. They're removing any power we have to peacefully resist their hegemonic takeover. Well, you know... It's getting to the point, Alex, uh, and I get, God, we're, 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 we're going to get flagged for this one. Maybe it's time for the rakes and the shovels and the torches. And you get what I mean. Yes, sir. Well, that's why they're gearing up and admitting in the Army Times that they're preparing the military to take on the American people. But the military is really waking up. What's your view on these giant military drills that they admit are training to take over the United States? It's horrifying. It goes back to that defense bill a couple years ago that McCain and the guy from Michigan ramrodded through that amendment to the offense bill, defense bill that allows the military to operate within the United States on the war on terror. That's right. And what did the it's John, absurd. And what did the John Warner Defense Authorization Act say in ninety seven? Uh, in two thousand and seven. In two thousand and seven. It said that Northcom is to stop insurrection in the states or by the states. It admits that it's to suppress the states. Yeah. So, you know, and you've got police forces out there now that they don't look like the police anymore. When I was a kid growing up, the police walked around with a little hat on and a blue shirt and these kind of dark blue slacks, and they got white cars that said protect and serve. Now the police come out with helmet gear on. They come out looking like they're uh, heading to Beirut, Lebanon, or Iraq for a full-scale war, and those are now our police. And then, and then I love this one. I want to bring this point up, Alex, that, that ties together a little bit. I know it's a little off, but in war, you're not allowed to use chemical weapons according to the rules of war. Yes. You cannot use chemical weapons against your opponent, right? That was one of the big excuses they had for us to invade Iraq was that Saddam did that. Geneva Convention. It's outrageous. So we can't use chemicals against an enemy, but we're allowed to use chemicals against our own people? You're absolutely right. When we come back, I want to get into the preparations for an economic collapse. Europe is already in free fall. There's already bank runs beginning. Uh, Ron Paul says that any minute the stock market could uh, implode. Here's the headline, CNBC, stock market, day of reckoning is near. I want to get former Minnesota governor's take on the state of the world, the economy, and why he thinks all these billionaires are fleeing to armored redoubts in uh, 
different areas of the United States and in New Zealand. Jesse Ventura, under establishment attack, is our guest, and he's got the courage to continue to fight. We need to support him. We'll be back. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. I'm Alex Jones. And I've been demonized. I've been attacked a lot. I expect that doing this. I don't want to be a slave. But I would expect that others that believe in freedom would support me. And you've done that with all that you've done. We try to sell high-quality water filters to cut out the glyphosates and all the rest of it and the fluoride. We High-quality non-GMO seeds at great prices, shortwave radios, liberty-based apparel, pro-gun apparel, hunting, fishing supplies, high-quality portable non-GMO, storable foods, super high-quality vitamins, minerals, supplements, nutraceuticals, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. We are selling out rapidly of Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 that so many people are deficient in. That's the whole halogen conspiracy. Watch the video at InfoWarsLife.com. We have the liver shield that opens up your liver and detoxes it with concentrated known herbs. We have the advanced liver cleanse. You can see instructional videos about that at InfoWarsLife.com. And your purchase of all these products funds this organization that is one of the only truly independent, nonpartisan, libertarian-based Americana organizations in the world. And we're a platform to promote and defend everybody else that's fighting for freedom and who is decent and honorable and who will stand up. And believe me, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, folks. I've been told by high-level people years ago that your show's going to explode because what you're saying is dead on. Get ready. It's going to be bad. And the elites are running for the hills. Jesse Ventura is with us five minutes into the next hour. We appreciate his time. He'll be back with us next week, hopefully, to launch that fundraiser, not for him, but for all of us. Uh, now that he has 33 companies lined up against him uh, doing this. But but getting into the elites, it's been a London Guardian, New York Times, running to New Zealand, buying safe houses, buying armored redoubts. You did a TV show on the uh, facility up in the Ozarks. Uh, what are they gearing up for? Ron Paul talking about stock market day of reckoning coming, uh, banker bailouts in Europe. Wh where is all this going, Governor? I, I, you know, it, it's, it's mind-blowing, Alex, because there's also the rumor, get away from the coast and get to the high ground. You know, I've heard that one now, that, 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 that ultimately Denver could become the capital of America. I don't know. You it know, is the alternate capital too. under COG. You're correct. It, it's already the alternate capital. Yeah, and, and so so what are they telling us? Something's going to happen down at o at the ocean level that is going to devastate and destroy everything there, and the only way to survive is to be up in the high country. I don't know. They are you acting know, like they don't care about anything anymore. I, it, it, it's 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 real. It's interesting. It'll keep you thinking and uh, and wake you up. Uh, I have to beg off a little, Alex, because I've been so entrenched in my own mess with this that it's very difficult for me to uh, focus on the otherworldly stuff right now and, and what's going on. So I apologize for that. Well, but I'm going to say this I, then. I, I I'm going to interrupt. This. If Ron Paul is scared, there's reason to be afraid. If Ron Paul is scared, there's reason to be afraid. I'll say this. They've tried to destroy your name. They haven't con uh, succeeded completely. You've gotten a lot of it back, clearly. You've, you've won with the jury, even if they overturn it, which we should fight. You still won with the people. They just engaged in fraud. But they're trying to keep you diverted so you don't run for president. I think the way you really get at them is do what they're afraid of. Well, okay, first thing is, though, I don't want to run too soon because it costs too much money then. And, and I want to do it when they get the pikers out. Get rid of the pikers. Get it when it's down to two. Which would the libertarian? It'd be perfect. That's June of next year, and then that then you time it out, Alex. June to November. You don't. That's how you do it. It's that simple. Your timing has to be correct. If you get in too soon, you'll you'll blow your wad too soon, and the, and you'll give them too much of a chance to destroy you. You got to have the perfect timing that leads up to that November election. And it's a, it's a window in there of about two to three months, four months. I want to hear I more about this. We're enough. back. I don't need to go get name recognition. So it can be done that way, Alex. We don't need to move on presidential shit. 70 seconds. We're back. I want to hear year. more about this. 70 seconds. In race war, I said that yesterday. I want to start a race war right before Juneteenth. Was he smart enough to figure it out himself? I think he had handlers. Reverend Childers does, too. That's coming up. Former uh, Governor Jesse Ventura is our guest.
if you just joined us, bombshell after bombshell last hour. The New York Times, with 32 other major media companies, with literally hundreds, if not thousands, of subsidiaries between them, are joining a lawsuit in appeal in amicus briefs trying to defeat Ventura. And, 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 and asking the court, let us have unjust enrichment off lies. They're saying, we want you to certify we can do this in their briefing. Governor, I know you're about to get back into president and running for president and, and the state of the world, but just briefly on that subject for the media, they're going to want to know. I, I looked around. I tried to go on the law sites and find this filing by them. I know you have a copy. Is there a way you could scan it and uh, email it to us so that we can put it in an article we're writing? Oh, sure. I, I'll take care of that, Alex. I'll get it to you but before Monday. Fantastic. It would uh, be a problem. And, and let me say this. Let me appeal to your listeners for a minute. This mainstream media, here's the deal, too. They're not talking about this. So what people can do right now, call your mainstream media, whoever it might be, because they're going to fall under these 33. You know they will. And ask why they're not reporting on what they're doing, that they're attempting to overthrow the Jesse Ventura verdict. And why are they not reporting on that? Why are they keeping quiet? Why, when 33 of them are attempting to do it, why is that not news in itself? That's another big piece of news that used to, when a company was being reported on and it owned a media company, they would have to disclose, by the way, that's the parent company of us. Now they don't do that. They're there trying to destroy you. And Fox never mentions, by the way, we own the movie and the book and are making hundreds of millions off this, uh, this Kyle fiction. Yeah, exactly. And the thing, what people can do, ask why they're not reporting this fact that they're attempting to overthrow a federal jury decision. There's your headline. New York Times and others trying to overthrow jury decision that media can be held accountable for lying. That's yeah. sensational news right there. Yep, because that's what they're working to do. That's what this brief is about. 33 of them signed on. It's 45 pages long. And, uh, you know, and they got these top lawyers out there. Who are the lawyers? Uh, Floyd Abrams, Susan Buckley, Miriam McHale, and Cahill Gordon, and Rendell LP, 80 Pine Street, New York, New York. So it's the big-time New York, New York lawyers coming after little Jesse Ventura in Minneapolis. <laughs> well, they're going to have a big fight on their hand with the Slovak German. <laughs> I tell you, well, it is just crazy. But listen, at, at a core level... Even though you've spent millions and exhausted yourself and all this, doesn't it feel good, though, that you've done the right thing and won the jury trial? Well, Alex, it's always this way. I, I, like I said during uh, when we have discussions of settlement, I said I cannot settle unless I can go home and look at myself in the mirror. And they said, we'll give you money and we won't appeal it. You just got to drop it and, not, and say we're not liars. No, they, but, no, they haven't even done that. They, they haven't even, uh, I don't want to get in the specifics of it because it's confidential, but they, they haven't even offered me what I've paid lawyer fees. I had gotten confused reading the papers, but they get it so wrong. I had read that, that they'd offered you stuff, but you just had to like not argue the, the, you know, the fact anymore. No, they have no, not at all. They've uh, they've been to tight vested. They haven't. They well, haven't made. They w they've wasted four four or five days of my life on these uh, on these meetings to settle because uh, they're worthless. Sure. They, Let they, me throw they, this to you in closing, and I appreciate your time. We'll talk to you next week, and I want to get behind you because we're all together on this. If you run for president, you'll also be able to make them being liars part of it and use that bully pulpit they can't ignore to further expose them. I think you got to run, and I think you're getting closer to running, aren't you, Jesse? I think you got the fire in the belly. Do you have it? <laughs> Not yet. I got to get this behind me first. All right. Well, I'll try to call and bug you later today or Monday. Let's stay in touch, and let's get you back on, and we'll get the story out. All right, Alex, and thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Hang in there and hide all your listeners. Andrew Jackson, once called